Hey there, I'm getting ready to install this door and this is the opening that I put the frame in in an earlier video if you want to go and watch how I did that. There's a link in the description. In this video though, I'll be hanging this door in the opening and whenever possible I like to take the door and put it in the opening, the existing opening or the new opening, whichever what whichever you have and see how it fits. Now I made this door specifically for this opening but I didn't do any fine tuning. I just got it close. So I slipped it in and I'm going to take a wedge and wedge it over tight against the hinge side and look and see how much of a margin I've got here. What I'm looking for for these residential interior doors is somewhere between say 3 16 of an inch for uh, you know a superior fit to a quarter inch for a perfectly fine fit. Right now this looks like it's about an eighth of an inch more or less all the way up and down. So I'm going to have to plane a little bit off and what I'll do is I'll plane it off both sides. But before I take it down to do that I want to check the head. And I can see that I've got more space on this side than I do on this side over here. And that's because this jam kind of follows the ceiling, which kind of follows the floor. And if you recall from me setting this frame, that was a priority to make it look right. You can always make your door to match these things. So I just got another wedge here, except it's a three quarter inch wide one. And I'm going to use that as a scribe to make a line across, like so. Do it from both ends. It's a little bit more convenient. And that'll show me how much I need to plane the top of the door to make it fit well in this opening. I've taken the door out of the frame again, and I've set it down on what is its latch side on the bottom here. I've got a door buck that's holding it up vertically like this. And what I want to do is I want to plane this edge all the way along one swipe. I'm not going to worry about bevel on this door because it's too thin. Uh, say a door that's less than an inch and a half really doesn't need a bevel. So I'm just going to take one continuous swipe along here. And all that's doing is just cleaning up this edge. Okay, that cleaned up this edge nicely. I don't have to do anything else with this other than to put the hinge pockets in here for the hinges. But I'm not ready for that yet. Now while it's still on this edge, you could say I want to plane a little bit of that part that I have to cut off. So I'm just going to do that next. There is quite a lot to be taken off here with this. And normally what I would do is I would cut this off with the circular saw and then plane it smooth. But that involves me setting it up on sawhorses out of this area. And I want to really do everything here in this area. Okay, I've got a plane down far enough on this side. Now I can flip it over and plane the other edge a single swipe and then finish planing that taper on the top of the door. Now I've taken the door and I've put it back up in the opening just to check to see how it looks. And it looks good. It looks like I'm not going to have any problem hanging it from here. The gap across the top looks great. Perfect actually. All I need to do now is to attach the hinge template to the door jam so that I can route in the hinge pockets. The hinge template that I'm using here is one I made myself. If you want to know more about this, there's a link to an article where I show the dimensions on my website. This basically gets attached directly to the frame with these number six screws. You can buy this type of thing, um, except it's expensive. It has little nails that you drive in. So there's 
usually no way of doing this without actually putting a small hole in the frame. But these are no big deal, especially on a painted frame like this one. I've got my router here, and it's my trim router that I added a base to and a collar so that it will follow this pattern inside here. I actually did this specifically for this. So the way this works is that this collar rides up around this pocket in here and the cutter, which is a half inch router bit, will cut out the pocket where the hinge goes. It'll leave the corners around, but that's something I can clean out with the chisel after I finish routing it out. And yes, I know there are going to be people that are going to say, well, you get a special chisel for that, John, that'll cut that corner. And yes, I've had that before. And no, I can't find it anymore. So I'm using a regular chisel for this instead. Uh, next, I need to route out the hinge pockets on the door itself. And I made this jig here so that it would do both. And I added these thumb screws on the back here and these little, you know, toggles, I guess you could say, or pieces of wood so that it would set the distance. I've already got a mark on there that corresponds with what I need on the door. And basically what these things do is they go against the face of the door so that you'll get the right depth for the hinge cut. So once again, this just gets screwed right on. I lined it up at the top of the door. I have a notch in the top of the jig that gives me an exact 1 8 inch space down from the head of the jam. And then I can go ahead and route out the pockets. Okay, now I can get this template off again and then I can chisel out the corners just like I did on the frame. And then I can put the hinges on the door to get it ready to hang. I've already marked the holes here on the hinge pocket and I'm going to drill those out now. You might be wondering why I'm not using one of those self-centering bits that you can get. I have one of those before and the problem with those is, is that they jam up way too often so you spend more time actually clearing the bits out of them than you do drilling the holes so I just do it this way a lot easier a lot faster too and now to hang it I'm just gonna slide it over like this in the jam or opening a little bit far swing it out past the frame line up the hinge with the pocket kick it a little bit on the bottom until it lines up with that and then I can drive the first screw in. The other way is to take the pin out of the hinge and screw this side of the hinge on first. But this is a lot faster and a lot easier too. Once you get the hang of it, that is. I'll do the next one down the same way. Now that I've got it swinging, I can check it out. And it's rubbing a little bit on the top there. But when I look at it on the outside here, the gap looks even and good. So I guess what happened is when I planed it, it went a little bit uphill. So I'm going to have to take a little bit more off this here. to fix this up a little bit better because it is just barely touching here I'm going to plane a little bit off the edge of this side and that looks good okay that looks really good nice even gap at the top when I look at it from the inside uh, that wraps this one up here I've got more to do with this door obviously I've got to ease over the edges and whatnot. I've also got to finish painting it because it's just prime right now. But I'm going to wait until 
the spring or early summer before I do that, I'll take all the doors off here in the house. I'll bring them outdoors and I'll spray them all a couple coats and that'll give me a nice, even, clean finish on them. I've also got to put the hardware on, but that'll be the subject for another video.